Welcome to our uh, special meeting tonight. Uh, we have uh, some special guests here to start off our meeting. And uh, I'd like to welcome the, which is your meeting? 2170. 2170. Girl Scout Troop 2178 is here to present the city and the city council uh, with their project. Come on up, girls. Services will coordinate with agencies on the federal, state, and county level 
For more information or to schedule an appointment, please call 705-7288. Beach uh, passes are on sale. As a reminder, 2018 beach passes can be purchased seven days a week at the Cabo building, located across from the ice arena. The hours of operation on Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., the weekend from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. to June 22nd. For more information, please visit longbeachny.gov slash beach. Uh, tomorrow there will be a landscaping seminar at the Long Beach Library at 7 p.m. to learn how to landscape a healthier Long Beach for your family and pets. The City of Long Beach and Perfect Earth Project have partnered to host the seminar that will discuss best practices for sustainable planting, watering, and maintenance of your lawn and your garden. For more information, visit www.perfectearthproject.com. Uh, this weekend is our last first Friday. The Long Beach Arts Council is inviting everyone to come out for HW Islands from the Caribbean to Hawaii as they wrap up first Fridays plus season. And welcome someone with Lyndon Ashy, Steel Pan Drummer, and with Dance Aloha. For information and tickets, visit lbny-arts.org. And this will be held in Bridgeworth. Arts on the Boardwalk this weekend. This is going to host the Fine Arts and Crafts Show. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the boardwalk at Riverside Boulevard. Watch on the boardwalk, a fine arts and craft show, the combination of the boardwalk craft fair and the Kennedy Plaza Fine Arts Show. The object is to give artists an opportunity to show and sell their creative work and to give residents and visitors an opportunity to experience current trends in visual arts. It will also encourage artists and crafters to come together for a profitable weekend of fun and exposure. The event is sponsored by the City of Long Beach in partnership with Arts and Plaza. Friday weekend, the LGBT Network the book, uh, Long Island Pride event returns to Long Beach next weekend with the 28th Annual Pride Parade taking place on Sunday, June 10th. For a full events listing, please visit prideonthebeach.org. The concessions have uh, opened, building on the success of past years. There will be an unprecedented variety of food options on the region for the for summer. Three new food trucks have been added to the Shorty Sport Food on the Truck Market at Redside Boulevard and the Boardwalk, adding to the diverse array of cuisines, including healthy options and enhancing the local flavor. In addition to the Shorty Sport Food Truck Market, there are also the Beach and Boardwalk Parts and the Boardwalk Concession Building, complete with fresh foods. For a full concession map, please visit the city's website. And finally, a reminder, a friendly reminder to commuters, the elite parking permit for the Long Island Railroad parking garage in Long Beach. Are due to expire on June 30th. New 2018-19 parking permits go on sale Monday, June 11th. Applications for parking permits are available on the city clerk's office on the third floor at City Hall. You can download at www.longbeachny.gov/cityclerk. To accommodate commuters, special hours have been set up in addition to our regular nine to five hours. The clerk's office will have extended hours on the following days: Wednesday, June 13th; Wednesday, June 20th. Wednesday, June 27th, uh, the 13th, we from 7 to 9 a.m. The 20th and the 27th are uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. 5 to 7 15 p.m. And that is it. All right. Thank you, Acting City Manager Tag. It was a really nice parade and a, and, a, and a solemn day, but it was great to see everyone out on Memorial Day. Remembering those laws. Um, so, our first item is a public hearing that is still open. So, our first item is a public hearing for the purposes of giving citizens an adequate opportunity to publicly present their views on the general summary of the capital improvement program for the five year period of July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2023. Okay, I'll just remind folks that this authorization for the capital plan is just that as an authorization. Uh, so not everything will be done or doesn't have to be done as the city moves as the city moves forward throughout the year. Um, unfortunately, it is a stripped down version of all the projects we would like to do, um, but this is the situation we find ourselves in. So these are the most important projects um, based on different departments. So I'll just ask the council if they have any further questions uh, for the DPW Commission. Nope. Any residents uh, care to speak or comment on the proposed capital improvement plan? Okay, seeing no hands, I, I close the hearing.
Second public hearing is for the purpose of giving citizens an adequate opportunity to publicly present their views and the general summary of the proposed budget for the year of July 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Okay, this hearing also is a continuation of a public hearing. Uh, this is the third hearing we're having on this. Um, if you haven't been up to the front, there are some uh, proposed amendments, uh, what we call the rider sheet. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, Ms. Blanchett is holding them up. Um, and those are some of the cuts or increases that the uh, council has proposed for the budget, to amend the budget. Um, it was, this is obviously a tough budget season this year, uh, but the council did come together. Uh, we do have some uh, revenue, uh, in, revenue enhancements uh, that we can't really see on this budget, so we're hoping to uh, be able to increase revenues through um, actually our DPW commissioner came up with a really great plan for uh, reviving our sanitation pickup schedule, um, which we can't reflect in this budget. Um, but, and you know, also the potential for parking meters, which we would have to have a hearing on. So there's other things out there. Um, we did come up with various cuts to various departments after talking to, to different, uh, you know, commissioners and, and the head of different departments about where we could squeeze every dollar from. Um, we did have a couple of concessions made uh, by a couple of the unions, which we didn't take um, for various reasons. And um, I guess that's where we're at right now. I don't know if the, if the council has any more questions about the budget or would care to make a statement about the budget process. Okay, seeing no nothing from the council at this time. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, if council member, council member, though, was just saying like, something about the process. Yeah, so we on the council, obviously, somebody put together a nice form letter, uh, form email that we've been getting about voting no. And uh, it, it's just important for people to understand the way this city code of ordinances has the budget process work. If the council votes no on the budget and votes it down, the budget that was submitted by the city manager goes into effect automatically, which would be the 12.4% tax increase. So voting no on the budget gives you 12.4%. As uh, Councilman Arano said, the council came together, put together the errata sheet, was able to make some reductions. So uh, if that is voted down, you actually will get the 12.4% that everybody's saying you vote no for. So just people need to understand that, that no vote actually means the 12.4% budget goes into effect. So the errata sheet, I should have said that, um, the errata sheet brings it down to a 9.89. Yeah. 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 Approximately, approximately. We're still crunching the numbers, um, but it's approximate. Good evening, just to make a clarification. So yes, the residential tax levy is going up 9.89, but the individual residential tax rate is going up 8.35. 8.35, yes. as opposed to? 12.36. And why does that uh, correlate to an increase? Hold on, sorry, you're out of order right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so, so it's an 8.35 as opposed to a 12.4, so um, I think so I guess the council have anything else? Okay. Um, anyone from the public right here? I see the first hand. Mrs. Ms. Good Ms. Goodman. President Rob Lodge, I just have to make a very quick record. Um, this is the first time I'm seeing uh, these budget amendments. Uh, and I just need to be clear that I did not advise the city council on this errata sheet, and I can't advise the city council on this errata sheet because of the clear conflict of interest that I have. Okay, thank you for making the distinction. The council is on. Corporate council just advised the council that he can't make, uh, can't, can't give us advice on the errata sheet because of a conflict of interest, which is fine. We, the only person we would need advice from is our controller on the errata sheet. So thank you for making that clear to Corporation Council. Yes, Ms. Good evening, evening. Monica, 55 West Broadway. So there are two errata sheets. 
So there's one is personnel. Is that correct? Yeah, it's I think it's two sheets from the same Excel spread. Yeah, right. So this one is one sheet is personnel. So the one that's run back are the actual line by line changes. Okay. And the second sheet is the individual personnel lines that were affected. Okay. By title. Okay. So this is even so though it's, it's two separate sheets, it's one errata sheet. And this was sheets. got it. Yes. Thank you. And this was created by whom? Five council members. Yeah. Well, the, the actual document was created by Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, understood. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. That was what I. That was what I was questioning. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Goodman. Yes, sir. Name and address for the record. Elliot Ratner. I live at four fifty one West Olive Street. Uh, just a common thing. I've been a Long Beach resident for 50 years, and this is the first time I've attended a meeting. Whoa. And um, my my big question is now that you mentioned, you know, uh, that this proposed now instead of 12.4 was eight and a half. Let's say, what is the average increase uh, for the taxpayer? Has anyone obviously come up with that? We did, yes. Yeah, it's about 274 dollars per year for okay. the average house. Okay, and and then. I guess this is a side related thing. I'm a CPA. I specialize in tax. And I, I really don't understand where that auditing firm, who obviously I know has to audit the company's, uh, not the company, but the city's books, you know, we went from a huge surplus one year now to this huge deficit. You know, have they, you know, done anything? Or, you know, have they, you know, responded? You know, this is, you know, to me, sort of unusual. Like I said, I'm, I specialize in tax, so not in auditing, but I've done audits before in the past. So, you know, what what's the situation, or what, you know, what did you know did the accountant firm, you know, see or you know? Christy, would you want to? Can you speak to now? We have a couple of different audits, but can you speak to the, the rainy day fund? I think that's the no, I'm not talking about the rainy day fund. The city, well, the city being a nonprofit organization, gets audited by a CPA firm. Okay, well, two, whatever it may be. And, you know, I just wonder, you know, why they didn't see anything potentially such a large swing from one year to the next. Okay, uh, just, just one minor correction. The city is a municipal corporation. It's not enough for Okay, well, um, still so gets the, audited. The annual financial audit speaks to make sure that the city is disclosing its numbers correctly, accounting for things correctly. Whether or not the city is running an operating deficit not necessarily their purview. Um, and the city is in an overall deficit position, it's just running up. It, it's been running operating deficits for the last few years. Just to show you the difference. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else care to speak on? Yes, Mr. Lynch, please come on up, state your name and address for the record. They know where. The sheet right here that just was handed five minutes ago. Yes. Quick question uh, with regards to shade trees. There was a line item that said $25,000 uh, that was proposed and it's been eliminated. Yes, I believe that Can was. someone speak to that and who that person is? I believe it was personnel, right? There were two items there. One was uh, park members that were there previously in order to water the trees that have been planted, the eligible trees. That the city had planted. That was supposed to be a two-year thing, and then posted at the sunset. That was not corrected in the uh, in the proposed budget. And the other ten thousand dollars is what they use to normally plant trees every year. However, we have a grant coming in next year to cover that, so that's why. Oh, uh, oh, thank you. I have a, a question. Doug Duncan, who used to work for the city, works for Lyro. He now is still on the city's payroll. I wanted to check to see if this has anything to do with that. I don't understand how somebody that works for Lyro could still be on a city payroll as a arborist or what have you. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? I couldn't speak personally. Yeah, I don't know. 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 I don't
I don't know that we have any current contract with new construction that would cause this conflict. And he is a like this office that is No, I, I understand that, but isn't Lyro under contract to do to oversee the planting of the trees? Commissioner Miranda. Yeah, first of all, Lyro doesn't have a continuing contract with some tree planting. Uh, Doug Duncan does not work for Lyro anymore. As a matter of fact, Doug Duncan is in the Army Reserve and does work for us on a part time basis, on a few days when we need him for our, as our office. Question answered. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else care to speak about the Rod Shield budget? Session, please come on up. Eileen Hessian. I hope I'm speaking on the right thing. Um, Jack's nine million, did we ever consider what happened to that? His extra money, his rainy day fund or whatever it was? Do we know where that went? Before he left, he said we had a, a extra nine million. Do you care to speak about the rainy day fund? So that nine million dollars was at the end of fiscal year 16. So fiscal year 17, the city ran about a million dollar deficit, and in fiscal year 18, we'll probably run about a two million dollar deficit. So it's about six million dollars, which is what we had talked about. Okay. Um, also, the biggest thing, of course, is salaries. And very often you say that that's a contractual agreement. We have no choice but to pay it. But who negotiates on the taxpayer's behalf? In other words, the unions or whoever comes in to get raises. Who's on the other side? So usually outside council. Outside council? For CSEA, it's been the Corporation Council. For the PBA and the UFA and COA, it's been uh, uh, Bon Schoen and became outside council. Maybe we should get better people to do some better negotiating for us because you know some of the salaries are just beyond belief. Well, this so, year we're prepared to go into binding arbitration with the PBA and do the city's fiscal fight. We're hoping for a favorable result. Okay, thank you. Um, there were some exempt uh, employees put into union positions without taking tests, which somebody told me is illegal. Has that been corrected? There are no exempts that were put in without taking a test. Okay. Um, yeah, all exempts, though, uh, and this is a lot of sheets, just so you're aware, all exempts are foregoing much to the dismay they raised this year. Okay, thank you. Um, also, I see that you saved, like, you know, whatever it is on this amount, which is great that the five of you got together and worked this out. The beginning of that seems to have been, you know, three or four meetings ago where Mr. Bendo mentioned, you know, where he started looking at things. So my only point is, you did $100,000 in these couple of weeks. And I think, Commissioner, you had also saved us some money a few weeks ago. If you had been working on this for all the years that you've been in power, imagine how much money you could have saved us. So I am hoping that you will work together, the five of you, and try to do something about this. There's too many friends and family in here. There are too many people you know, making more than they should be making. And if you work on this as hard as you worked on this, maybe you can get something done. Thank you. So just to see that a little bit, year was at 1.4% 1, 1, 1. Uh, tax increase because we did shave off a lot and everywhere, and then this year we found ourselves in an operating deficit. So I think collectively we're learning that there's a balance and that, you know, we try and do our best to provide the services that everybody wants, but also we do have to pay for the services. I know we need we need money for the services, and I appreciate all the services that we have. Yeah, you know who should be here tonight is Jack answering a few questions. Yeah. Thank you. Mary Volosevich. Uh, hi, Mr. Kalinitsky. Nice to see you. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to verify. So what you're saying is those positions that you made, you were transferring people into different positions, um, they are no longer in, you're not putting them in those positions with raises? No, that's not what I said. I said they did take the service service. They, they did take a service, civil service test. Oh, okay. Um, 
And I, but I don't see here what would it be under that you're you're talking that we're talking about. It's not here. I don't. I see city clerk, but I don't see um, the other positions that you had um, put on that you were moving people to with the raises. So they're not getting the raises, but they're going into those positions. That's correct. Am I right? You're talking. You're talking too big. I'm not sure. You had some positions. There was an, uh, a transportation, I think, position, a cashier position. My question to you is, they are going in those positions but without raises? Is that correct? No, they were compensated last year and those raises were raised. So, no. Okay. So, so someone that was on in your budget last year is not getting a $20,000 no. raise. Somebody that is in transportation is not is not getting a raise, right? But the is not getting a raise, no. What about the cashier? Yeah. The cashier was given twenty thousand dollars by the thing while she was acting as a secretary of city manager. Speak your name and address for the record. Um, Edward Werner. First, I think it's ridiculous that this budget is being this amended budget is being released hours before the budget vote. I would have to say this is one of the most untransparent moves created by any government. I check the budget uh, budget information on the city every hour today, and yet these amendments were not released. Yet they were released two minutes into the city council meeting. Um, if you look at it, the school district. Uh, your sister organization has released three revised budgets in this year. Yet you, you see the revised budget, uh, like I said, two minutes into the meeting. So again, that is very wrong. Um, I said last meeting I recommended a decrease in consulting fees for the Corporation Council, yet this budget has a $25,000 increase in um, consulting fees for the Corporation Council. Why? First of all, do we need an increase in consulting fees when we have four full-time lawyers in the Corporation Council already? Please also, um, again, um, the, I, I, re I recommend it in my list to the, uh, to the City Council that a removal of the Public Relations Department, also known as the Publicity Department. When we're in a fiscal crisis, there is again no need for ninety uh, for over a hundred grand in public relations. Um, and again, I see this budget. It keeps it keeps exempt employees at very high rates. It keeps police officers making three hundred thousand dollars a year, while it cuts salaries and over and it cuts salaries. And so, which because you can't do anything because of the union contract, you're cutting these people's hours. For the people who clean your streets, who clean the beach, who keep this city running. They're the ones in the background. They're the ones doing the work, and you're cutting their pay? It, it just baffles me to see. It, it really does baffle me. And another question I have, again, why is there an increase in consulting fees? In the line-by-line -line budget, we have a fiscal $50,000 in fiscal agent fees. What is that going to? And where is the current audit report? I checked today online, and the only audit report released on publicly is the 2011 audit report. But again, we have not seen an audit report, and the fiscal year ended in June 30th. So I asked the, the control to answer my questions. OK, so I can address the consulting fees. And I think every council member here will agree it actually is probably too low. Um, we have some huge cases that the city is battling with, and that's just the way the legal system works. So, um, and the twenty-five thousand dollar increase, um, I think it would be, people would be interested to know that twenty-five thousand dollar increase was um, the raise that Corporation Council ISDC received. Uh, he declined the raise, so rather than just take that off the tax rolls, we decided that we needed it in. Uh, I think we all five of us agreed we needed that in the consulting fees. Well, so are these lawyers unable to do their jobs then? Four full-time lawyers. I don't think you can comprehend the amount of legal work that a city actually has to do. And 
actually, the legal staff we have is quite unpaid. I can also respond just for a second. It's not all outside counsel. And while our inside counsel is incredibly competent and represents the city regularly very well, there are certain expertise that people have. And it's not only legal fees, it's not only outside counsel for just attorneys. There are other consultants that are included in that line. As we prepare for litigation that everybody's read about in the paper, it's quite significant. We need to make sure that we have services there in order to prepare properly for it. Just like you would want the experts to testify on your behalf if you needed it, the city needs that as well. And we want to make sure that we have the very best. Well, I just think that when you're giving taxpayers an 8%, 9% increase, that you should be looking at every single consultant you're being paid. And it, the taxpayers would be a lot higher if we didn't have those consultants. The juries return massive burdens against the city. I just want you to know that. It would be like $100 million, okay? Thank you. Christy, oh. can you talk about the publication of the audit reports? Well, I'll let it So the, the fiscal agency are the costs that the city incurs in the borrows. That's what it pays the bond council, that's what it pays movies, that's what it pays with its fiscal advisor every time it issues debt. That's what those fees are. And the 2017 report is still ongoing, and we expect to have support in the next nine years. I, I see almost every business, nonprofit, municipality has released their audit report for the last fiscal year. What what is it's almost a year at this point. What what are what's going on? There's just been a lot of turnover and the higher. But but that's an outside system. audit form. You need an external audit. It has nothing to do with your internal staff. Appreciate it, you know, driving. It is an outside audit, but you need the cooperation of the people inside. You need the expertise inside to prepare the documents, to prepare the analysis, to do the analytics. So it is an external audit, but if you don't have the staff inside in order to support them, then they don't have anything to work. Well, if I'm a borrower for the city, I mean, I wouldn't give the city money anyway, but it seems. So it seems it seems very wrong that you are withholding this audit from the taxpayers and the borrowers. Thank you. Ms. Blanchett. Please state your name and address for the record. You just always want to know where I live. That's so creepy. <laughs> Allison Blanchett. <clears throat> Had I not jumped up and passed these out, I don't know how people would have gotten them. Um, Ryan, you owe me doing your job. Um, so any, yeah, and then everyone would have to rush up and then they wouldn't be able to hear you. But anyways, you should have had them out earlier. Um, you should have had them, you sh well, you should have had them done earlier. You should have had them done earlier. So the city, you wanna keep going? I'll go three minutes, Aramo. So, the city, I, I'm having trouble understanding this because I didn't have any time because I was busy handing them out for you. Um, but the city manager position that 320, the 329, so that's the city management and all of his staff. So would that include like the deputy, the assistant, all of that stuff? It'd be great if, uh, why, I don't know why this wasn't broken down line, like by each item in there. Is that, his whole office or his or her yeah, whole office? Yeah, Sorry, I know I'm eating up valuable time trying to understand the sheet that you gave me no time to read. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Transportation. I brought this up at that last meeting about budget stuff. You have a head of transit and a head of transportation. Did you did you straighten that out on this? Did you straighten that out on this? It's a very simple question and you should know this. Well, you had let me let me continue. You had the head of transit is Michael Robinson for $117,122 in addition to his position and salary as deputy city manager. In a, now that was a brand new position that you created for your friend, Michael. And in addition to that, we already have a head of transportation, Brendan Costello, who on the budget was, we're looking at 105,000 plus 
Plus three dispatchers. I see some overtime here. That overtime predominantly seems to go to the dispatchers who collectively are making an average of slightly over 100,000 per year. In addition to urban engineers who you've hired at over $65,000 in grant money that should have gone to offset the cost of Brendan Costello, but instead you're using them to do his job. So explain to me, did you correct these issues that I have brought up to each and every one of you in multiple emails? Email saying, who is gonna respond to this? Who is going to respond to this? Bendo, Anissa, thank you. Did you discuss this? Are these two people still making that same amount? Yes. You created a new job while you cut bus service in half last month. This is shameful. We still have bus schedules with Eileen Goggin's name on it at the station. This is disgusting how you consistently for years have shit on bus riders. Shame. Anyone else care to speak on the budget? So I just have a couple of questions. Oh, sorry, Nori. Don't start my two minutes. Thank you. Don't start. Nori. Um, so I just have a couple of questions. Mr. Agassiz refused or didn't take his twenty-five thousand dollar raise. Is that I'm wondering because the residents brought up about the payouts and everything. And just to do a quick aside, has all the payout sheets been received by all council members? Um, okay, so with trees, can you just explain to me, I guess Ms. Hightower, um, I was on the understanding that we had got money from FEMA um, for the trees and that any that had died, that they would come back and replace and that they were responsible for watering, and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just wondering, is this $35,000 coming from that or is there a separate um, group in the city that is responsible for watering like I guess our new trees or is this FEMA so, trees? So this item was already answered just a few minutes ago. It was two part-timers that should have come off and also the uh, $10,000 for trees that we were going to purchase but we received a grant for that. And is that included in like the Lira grant? Like when so they that's came... long done. Those trees are, you know, if they had a year from the day they were planted and any of that fall into that property was still on the back. Um, year, so if we planted any trees under that contract, they usually have a year, just like the ones that are going to be planted now would have generally a year if they die, they get replaced. But these are under grants, so that may be different. Okay, and then this young gentleman that seriously needs to start running for a council, he's amazing. Um, the external audit that he's referring to, is this the state audit? That yeah, it's the external financial statement. From this is that by one more thing on the trees, FEMA does not pay for watering. Right. It pays for the physical trees themselves when they're planted in the city is responsible for water. Okay, and I never understood that because in New York City they water. So I never understood that, but that's water under the bridge. Um so but the Or didn't one but somebody up here say water under the bridge a couple of weeks ago? Um so but with the audit that this young gentleman was talking about, is this uh, the audit from the Napoli's office that he hasn't seen from, or who is the external audit? No, it's, the, it's just our financial statement on it. And that's not available to us? No, it might not be available to From It's not available to anybody, it doesn't exist. But from what, exist what year is the last year that I can see the... June 30, 2016. Now it should be on the website, we'll, we'll look at that. Okay. Sure it is. Okay. And every other year prior to that is there? I don't know how many years the city keeps on the website. <laughs> Back to 13? Okay, so we could, okay, all right, great. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eden.
State your name and address for the record. Uh, Kim Musman, 77 Oregon Street. And hi. Oh, they can't. They can't hear me. Hi, Kim Musman, 77 Oregon Street. Nobody ever told me I was too low when I spoke. Um, so the reason I came out tonight is because I was concerned about something that I read in Newsday, and I, it could have been quoted wrong, or please just uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It said something about an idea about subcontracting out the morning and aftercare that's currently being provided by Youth and Family Services. I guess it was thrown around as an idea, and I'm just here to advocate for keeping it as part of our city program as is. I think your kids went through the program, Ms. Danella, and um, Ms. Liz and Ms. Cole, and, and these are great people, and it's a great program. It's like family for us, for my son, and I just want to um, please urge you to not subcontract out that program or change it in any way. I think it's really well run city program, um, and uh, I just really hope you can keep it as is. And if I see there are some cuts to salaries and things like that, I just really hope that's not going to affect the people at the lowest rung of that system because they're the ones who are working directly with our kids. And, um, you know, like I said, there we put our children's health and safety in their, and education in their trust, and I really just don't want to see their salaries go down at all. So um, can you just answer there, that? There was, no, there was never anything on the table to cut the pre k or and not to subcontract it out because that was in Newsday, unless no, I, I read it I wrong. Mischaracterized um, the potential to the daycare. The daycare. One of the things that I did in my budget presentation was I highlighted certain areas okay. for the council to consider whether we wanted to privatize or, or okay. cancel the program. It was there was some very drastic things that were in that. Uh, the council rejected it out. Okay. Full day I, I gotcha. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, James Kirkland, uh, Riverside Boulevard, Long Beach, New York. Um, I uh, I was looking through um, the the original budget and uh, I noticed that. Uh, the um, increase in health care has gone up about 24%, a little over 20%. Has that been addressed in that manner? Which, which one? The well, I mean, eight, a 24% increase in premiums would certainly get me looking around for another source. Well, again, that's something that's contractual. So the fact that the city uses nitrous health care is in all of its contracts. So that, uh, that's like perpetual and forever as, as, as it is right now I don't the healthcare industry overall is seeing huge increases and the city's company is not now does it have anything to do with the fact that they get a Cadillac uh, health care plan there are only two options within night shift and uh, the city does have the higher option but it always has and again, that's also in the contracts. Because everybody I've talked to, I asked them about, do you get your co-pays for your premiums and your uh, and your doctor visits paid for? And they said, no, not me. So it seems like uh, that's something we'd all like to have. This, the plan that they have does have co they, they I think that they you're mixing up something. I'm not sure. I just said that co-pays and uh, drugs. There are. I think the union, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the, the union actually reimburses co-pays. So they do pay, they do, the folks, the members do pay co-pays, but then they're reimbursed by then they the re union. So it's separate from the cost. Okay, so. Just, just so you know, I have the same plan for my own employer through the state, and we do pay co-pays. And it increases, right? it increases every single year what the co-pays actually are. Covered. It's the same as the challenges that are facing those who have this plan Okay. Um, and the other thing is, is that uh, the uh, the city's been uh, basically running on about thirteen cents uh, per dollar surplus uh, after uh, after salaries and and healthcare benefits. Um, with your reductions, do you have any sense of 
Uh, are we up to 15 cents or maybe a quarter uh, with these reductions? Without knowing how we calculated that, there's no way to do that. I mean, because at 13 cents per dollar, it doesn't give you much room to play or, or to do anything else in the city to make any kind of improvements. So, Again, I don't know where you get the 13 cents per dollar. The thing is, the department is referring to the discretionary budget amount. And how much is left after salary benefits? Yeah. So. As far as calculating the percentage off the top, it's not I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burkhorn. Yes. Please state your name and address for the record. Tina Fiore. I have a question um, since we have not replaced either position. This budget shows a city manager salary of 330000 plus per year. It doesn't seem to be that we're anywhere near changing or filling that position, so that number probably could be reduced um, if it takes us another six months to fill that position. So that number should be adjusted. And on top of that, we have uh, no comptroller salary put in there except for $7,500. I would hope that, well, no offense, Ms. Hightower, I know you have another job, but we need to fill that position as well. So why is there no comptroller salary being shown? Because that will automatically change our budget numbers. Yeah, so that's I think being shown. this is just the large issue. So the comptroller salary is in the budget, I believe. We just didn't change it. And the, the reason that the but correct me if I'm wrong, the reason why the city manager line, that's not a $331,000 salary for him, it's the whole department. We lowered some of their salary within the department, so that's why we show money in March. I, so we are, because we are so budgeting for a city manager, because yes. uh, it would be foolish not to just like the control or then we might. Have, have we adjusted those salaries though? On, in, in this case, because as I said, it's we're over six months that we filled those positions. It could quite possibly at this rate be another six months before we fill those positions. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe if we're looking to reduce numbers, maybe we should look at that unless we have a DTA on when those jobs will be filled. No, I, I, you know, if we're, uh, you know, for every three hundred thousand. Well, I'm, I'm sure you would like that to happen. No doubt you'd like to be out of it. But I know you're not collecting that salary either. So in all fairness to, to you, I'm not, I'm not trying to do so it. Like to speak to yeah. So I think right, once we do get a city manager and a controller, those salaries will have to be in the form budget next year. So it doesn't always make sense to reduce something for just the one year when you know you have to put it back next year. Okay, but we're looking to save money this year, so. And if those positions aren't filled, that money will be saved because it's kind of making up. It could also be higher than if, to fill to refill these positions at the salaries you're putting. It could very well cost us more money, considering our rate of pay maybe not up to par to get the right person for the job either. So it, it's just it's just a thought. I missed your answer. On page 56 of the budget, I think it has the information you're looking for. On page 56 of the budget, it has the okay. breakdown for the city manager's I'm, office and the controller. That's the uh, drill down you're looking for. Okay. Uh, do we know when we're going to replace those jobs while I'm here? Any thoughts? <laughs> Any thoughts that we're going to replace the two biggest positions we have in this city since I we're in the crap that we're in? I don't think we can answer that question, but I also don't think we're going to find a controller until we have a full time city manager. Okay. Based right. on the community. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at with that progress? We're still working on it. We've been a little distracted. God, we're still, moment. I'm going to have, that's my next button. List. I'm still working on it. Okay, we need to work a little harder on that position because we're adopting a, a budget, you're looking to adopt a comprehensive plan, and you're looking to make changes to zoning, and we don't have leadership, nothing personal, we don't have the person that's gonna take us into the next year. Point taken, thank you. Anyone else here to speak on the budget? Come on up, sir. Name and address for the record. Yeah, hi, good evening, Jay Gosler. Um, I got to apologize. I was re reviewing these myself, um, and I know there was some conversation going on. So we started out with a proposed budget that included 12.3% tax increase, correct? And we're now down to? 8.35. Okay, so let's say about a 4% reduction nominally. Now I'm looking at these erratas, and I see a uh, 526K um, reduction in revenue, and I see what basically amounts to a corresponding 526k uh, reduction in expenditures. So those seem to be a wash. So these don't explain the 4% reduction. 
would you guys be able to uh, make me understand perhaps where we we're achieving that four percent reduction? Well, we can announce people because the budget has to be balanced. So we'll announce the Okay, so uh, as far as the, um, the being about half a million other revenue streams were found, the council was committed to um, putting forth other revenue streams. So that would that allow us to increase some revenues and then decrease the property tax report. All right. Well, my question then would be if there were other revenues that, that materialized somehow, why aren't they reflected in these errata sheets? Aren't these yeah. errata sheets? The I see five. Taxes are going to go down about a million dollars, but yet they're losing a half million dollars decrease because we have their fees and support anyway. All right, well, but to me, these, these cancel each other out. That still doesn't explain the 4%. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy, to, I'm happy that you guys are able to reduce this thing 4%. I'm happy still that you guys didn't uh, uh, sacrifice your paid fire department and make them the scapegoats for your own mismanagement, as I totally expected you to do. But I do have another question on the fire department. I see here that you list uh, four lieutenants and one XO. I, I'm aware that there are five lieutenants and one XO. Is there a plan to demote somebody in the fire department? And I'm just going to ask you again for the third meeting in a row. Do you guys have any fix on the uh, current obligation that you guys owe for uh, time, various forms of time to the city's workforce? I, I've asked the last three meetings and I got this pretty much the same response. I've been advised since then that in last year's budget that that number was posted as $29 million last year's budget. You guys. Don't, nobody looks at this budget hard enough to, to, to understand that. It's a pretty important thing. It's unbonded debt. It's hanging over our heads. It's not going away. Do you guys, has anybody had a chance to look at it? Do we know what it is for this current budget? No? Great job. So that liability is measured once a year. So at that June 30, 2017 was about 30 million. But what it consists of, it's not unbonded debt. What it consists of is all approvals that employees have available to them, vacation, sick, calm, and most of them take it in time. People take vacation, people take sick days. So we will not necessarily pay that out in bonded debt. Uh, at the same time, it also encompasses all you know, 300 plus of every, of every city employee over the next 20 to 30 years. And then a lot of them that have been retired for 20 or 30 years, and they'll use it all the time. But you should still know the answer. Have, and there have been some discussions in the uh, union negotiations for the new hires are capped at those, uh, those banks. Okay, anybody else care to speak? Come on up. Please state your name and address for the record. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jeff Lewis. I'm the Chief Danielle from Shore Road. Um, I have two questions. One is the last one on the first page. It says, Art Council, Supplies and Materials. They proposed a budget of 1,750, yet they've upped it to an adopted budget of $10,777. What are they doing that they needed to raise it over 9,000? Okay, so that is the first Friday's program. There was a three-year funding stream put in place, so it was about $25,000 the last year. Last year, there was three years. So it was not, it was mistakenly not included in the lowest budget. So that supply of materials went up the exact same amount that their, their funding issue for this year. So it was an oversight and now we're paying for it. Yes. Okay. Um, one other question was. Um, no, I got it. I got it. Um, I had the utmost respect for the police department. Um, I see though the fire department, many others have the regular salary proposed and overtime, yet I'm only seeing one line for the police being overtime salary. There's no salary line for police. So there's a number. You're looking at the exchanges. Okay. You're looking at what's changed in the budget. Okay. And if it hasn't changed, it's not listed. Okay. So it just means that it's not changing. Okay. Well, oh, didn't know that till now, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here? Come on up, sir. Mr. Boyd. Name and address, 
Uh, Mike Delory, Law Beach. Um, good evening. Could you could the council explain to me what you've adopted, what your your policies are, what will be instituted to keep the department heads accountable for overtime? Um, are you going to review it monthly, quarterly? Because for the past five or six years, it's consistently not it has exceeded um, your budget. I understand that there are items, there's emergencies, there's situations that are uncontrollable. However, um, a couple of, maybe a year or two ago, I had mentioned to the former city manager that why don't you have quarterly reports? And you don't have to give it to the public. You give it between yourselves. So you know what you're doing. You guys are all elected by us and it's been said before that we put our trust in you so we don't have to I could tell you from personal experience I don't have any trust and it's not collective here it's and I don't want to say that so I'm gonna move on but I highly recommend that you do that for your own sake. Okay, next. Uh, the financial statements are not available. Yes. yes. If you don't mind, I'm gonna go through a couple of topics. I know I'm gonna exceed the three minute limit. Uh, financial statements are not available. I foiled it, I called the controller's office and I and I and I know they're not available. I'd like to the to the current controller to advise me or us or you when it will be available. Does it, does it affect bond financing? I am sure you're being asked of the status of the financial statements from outside parties. Is that correct? Do you have an issue? Do you need more help? Do you expect it to be done within the next 30 days? No, as I say earlier, we expect it to be done within the next 90 days. Will the state control come in to help you? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Next. Um, the bond council, is that bond Shonick and King? No, our bond council is Harris Beach. Harris Beach, okay. Does Harris Beach also the bond council for this school district? Oh, you wouldn't know that. Okay. Um, yes? Thank you. Do we have a list of termination pay for the 1819 uh, budget? Because um, you're probably going to want to pay that out in December, or January, February? Yes, the list exists. There is a there is a list. Okay, is that list available? Not tonight, but will it be available? I think in general it's available, but I don't know if it's available. It's available or and foilable? I don't know. I don't know if it's foilable. It does exist. It does exist because that's the number you have in the budget. Yeah, I'm talking about next year. Sure. So this is. Is the time. No, well, no, we don't anticipate it because people who are retired took their pay over three years. Right. So we know we the way the budget is formed is we know the ones that we have to pay over eighteen nineteen by the payments over three years, and then we put in a little bit of estimates for possible retirements and costs, things like that, and that's how we estimate the budget. Right, and you have that under financing revenue, I bet, or finance. Yes, exactly. Okay, that is what I was going to ask to look at, not tonight, but. Can it be made available? And if it is available, does it have to be foilable? That's a question that's good. Fine. I'll move on. I know I'm almost done. Your, your time's up. Time's up. Okay. okay. We'd like to respond to the, yeah, I just to the to old questions. Those questions. Yes. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that that was a great question. Excellent question. I want to thank you because you've raised this issue several times. And I just wanted to make it clear that, the, again, producing and delivering the budget that we and the revisions that we produced today that we presented to you, that was a priority. However, in our conversations with everyone that's, that's here in terms of the council, we said that this was going to be a priority moving forward, that we would move forward with procedures and policies so that we can have that level of accountability, so that we won't have to come back here next year with the same questions and some of the same challenges. But we decided that as a council, right now the priority was the budget. And I also wanted to just for point of information, 
some people had raised concerns with respect to Mr. Arashi. We were still working upstairs up until 7 o'clock to make sure that everything was accurate. That's why there was a delay with respect to getting this information out to the public. We, um, and we want, we want you to know that this is, we take this seriously. This is serious. So it's not that we were upstairs holding the arrival sheet from anyone. We were still working to the last moment because we wanted to make sure that all of our numbers were accurate so that we could present this information to the body. Thank, thank you, Council. Thank you. And I'd just like to add that we have um, made some changes to the overtime policy that I'll just ask the IBC manager to speak to. Thank you. Uh, a couple of months ago, I put in that all overtime has to directly go through me. Uh, the last pay period, we saved $97,000, and pay period before that, a similar amount. So I've been very, very careful uh, monitoring the overtime, and I, I would strongly recommend my successor take that one. Thank you, Rob. And if I can also respond to your, your original question, was that somebody monitor it or later, but in our packets, every week we receive a printout of the per department, a printout of overtime, and where, how we are, what, what we're doing. So we are aware of it. it comes Okay. So you say you feel comfortable that what you're getting now, you're 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 a little bit more informed, or absolutely okay. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. I know it's not an easy process. Right now. Appreciate your time. Okay. Anybody else care to speak on public hearing number two? Come on, you're on deck. Come on up, sir. Oh, okay, Tom, it's you. <laughs> Thank you. Carmine Convertino, Long Beach, New York. Uh, I, I'm mentioning this at the budget uh, meeting tonight because um, I was told that there's a problem on Beach Street every night around 3 p.m. The traffic goes from as far as you can see into East Atlantic Beach all the way to New York Avenue. And I'm mentioning it because I was told that they cannot afford or we cannot afford uh, to hire more specials or police officers to assist with this. I don't know if changing lights uh, or the rhythm of the lights, however you might say it, uh, is, is going to help. But one car making a left turn can back up the traffic uh, basically 10 blocks at least. Um, I, I don't think it's a summer problem because I've been noticing it for the last six months. I'm on that road every day. And I've noticed very recently, actually Friday, that when the summer traffic hit the city, it went in both directions on Beach Street, not just heading east. So that's the summer situation that we're looking into, or looking forward into. And I just want to mention it, if you need to add a few, a few dollars to hire more specials or police officers or whoever, I, I'm, I don't know. I just know it's a mess. Um, you may want to add that to your budget. Was someone directing traffic at the corner of Beach? And well, no, you, you need a couple of, a couple of blocks. Like maybe where the bus stops are, you know, Wyoming, uh, Arizona, more towards the west, you know, Tennessee, just something to keep the traffic flowing. Uh, maybe even directing people up to Park Street or Park Avenue to go through town. I know you don't want them to pass your businesses. You want them to see the businesses and the bars and the restaurants, etc. But uh, it's really... It's really, uh, there, it's an accident waiting to happen, basically. Uh, that, that's what I wanted to say about the budget. I would also, while I'm up here, like to thank all of you back there. Everybody's quick to point the finger and to be what I consider disrespectful to you guys. I know you all a little bit. I know some of you more than others. I know you have the, the, the well-being of Long Beach in, deep, deep, deep in your hearts. And I want to say thank you from Carmine, to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I'll ask the traffic to Thank you, Tom. And I'll ask the traffic to Tom to look into that, especially with the summer season upon us. Mr. Ashby? 
Uh, good evening, City Council members and Acting City Manager. Um, just a couple of things. I haven't read the errata sheet, it's too small and whatnot. But anyway, a couple of things. Um, first, um, at the last meeting on May 15th, the City Council members were supposed to get the payout information and the uh, letter that went to the New York State Comptroller uh, asking for an investigation of the separation payout. Someone asked earlier whether you got all the information now, and I think the answer was yes. Yes, slightly off topic, but yes, we've got all the information. Yeah. Well, it all relates back to the budget. Is, has, but has anyone gotten the letter to the New York State Comptroller asking for the investigation that was supposed to be delivered at the same time? It is. It relates to an investigation of our finances, Mr. Kalinsky. Don't shut me down. <laughs> you said on the record that everyone would have the letter to the New York State Comptroller asking for an investigation of the separation payouts because you guys didn't want to do it yourself. It was supposed to be delivered. What I'm hearing is it wasn't delivered, and we're over two weeks later. Related to that and related to the budget, our former city manager said that he got more than his 30% of sick days because he got an opinion from a city council, uh, uh, a city lawyer, and that's the way it was uh, applied evenly. I'm just curious whether you investigated whether all exempt employees that received separation payouts since 2012, in fact, got 100% or did they get 30%? Do you know? So it's all being audited by the New York City Council. Okay, thank you. So. Uh, we've run structural deficits for year after year after year, and I want to know what, if anything, you guys have done, other than just trying to make budget or reduce it this year, what you've done to sort of correct the process that we end up in every year running structural deficits, if anything. And if you want, let me just rattle off a few questions, and then, then maybe you can answer how I do that. And, and tied to that, we know what the big issues are. Over time, I heard uh, Mr. Tagney say he's been like a hawk on it recently, but he also says he wants out of this job. So what is this structure? What are the controls that are going to be in place when Mr. Tagney is gone that will stop overtime from running amok and it's running millions and millions of dollars over every year? What about, what are we going to do about the fact that we have in so many departments tons of generals in relation to the infantry? people that seem to be in those positions just because they got promoted and they could get paid more. How do we deal with that? That seems like a big part of the reasons we have structural deficits. Uh, and then there's the issue about creating positions with some, which some of the residents have already uh, um, discussed. Uh, also want to know whether, if we have any idea, maybe City uh, Corporation Council can answer, what is the timing on the Haberman litigation? Because I don't think that's dealt with in this budget and is an expectation that it will have to be dealt with in this year's budget, or is that something that, because of litigation, will be past that? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the timeline is. We have outside counsel for that matter. I don't know the timeline. All right, but there's no budgeting for paying a $50 million judgment right now in this budget, correct? I don't know what's budgeted in the budget, but as far as the Haberman case, I'm not sure of the timeline. Mm -hmm. So if you could just address my comments about the structural deficits and what we might be doing to put in controls, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. that management around. It's, it's one of those 
issues where we it's an uncontrollable <coughs> variable. And so that's why we'll have to be creative with creating revenue and then also obviously putting some procedure in place so that we can once again uh, maintain a balanced budget. If I can just expand on some of the things that Dr. Norman Moore said, if you look at the beginning of the um, ROC sheet that was provided, you'll see that there's a number of revenue sources that the City Council has been able to propose in the last two weeks. We're all committed, I think, to being as creative as possible in terms of finding new sources of revenue. I think you'll, you can see here there's a number of different ones that are listed, but there's also one that we continue to research and look into in order to bring in new sources of income and new sources of revenue into the city. So I think that's a commitment that each of us has made in terms of, of preparing this budget that those sources of revenue actually are in place. Anyone else care to speak on budget? Budget, but public hearing number two. Okay. Seeing no hands, I close the hearing. I'll do a regular calendar. And one is resolution authorizing the action to have the group program for five years of July 1st, 2018, June 30th, 2023, inclusive. Here's the number of the And two is the resolution authorizing the adoption of the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2018. And then in June 30, 2019, appropriating the sums set forth therein and determining the fixing of the real estate tax level. The hearings will have on this item. Item 3 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase recreation, youth and family services, and lifeguard t shirts, sweatshirts, workings, jackets, and hats from the most responsible bidders. Okay, we run a summer camp for youth and family services where we provide t shirts for the participants uh, so we can identify the children as we fund our program. Same with the lifeguards uh, and uh, the recreation camps. Just as a quick aside, the bid that we currently have expires on June 5th. So without approving this new bid, we would effectively be out of business on June 6th if we need to purchase stuff for the camps. How many bids did you receive? Uh, I think it was 28 days worth of bids, and I think there were a dozen vendors. Any other questions by the council? Uh, just, just a couple. Um, do we basically re-equip all the employees each season with new clothing and things like that? There is a system in the light card in the contract where they do get certain things every year and then they get they go a couple of years without raincoats, some of the other you know, high ticket items. Uh, most of this is for the actual participants. Like the junior light cards, they always new people. Uh, the um, the camp attendees that get a new shirt uh, every year. But for the lifeguards, it is contractual. Uh, so, so I guess what I have to add is uh, kind of related to that is um, the, the resolution said basically has us um, getting 42 different types of items, but there's a lot of comments like eight different t shirts from vendors. Uh, eight different jackets, five sweatshirts, you know, things like that. Um, would there be any, and, and I guess it's not going to happen right now, but any potential savings going forward in doing some standardizing? Uh, maybe not customizing every jacket, every t shirt to every you know, niche of the department or event? I guess we, we have started doing that, like with our races, the medals are all standardized, the uh, t shirts are in manager's race. Instead of saying city manager is too bad, for that and some of that has been done. I can say with the lifeguard contract, uh, the most recently adopted one, uh, we began alternating years where certain clothing items were bought. I thought that if we buy them in bulk, uh, that, that the city would save a little bit more money. Questions on the public? T-shirts, hats, raincoats. Seeing no hands, next item. Okay, I have a resolution rescheduling publication for hearing and rescheduling the public hearing regarding the ordinance to amend code ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding the Long Refuge. Science so publication only and hearing will be held June 19th at 7 p.m. I have five resolution authorizing publication of hearing and the ordinance to amend code ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding special events. The science so publication only and hearing will be held June 19th at 7 p.m. On to the vote. 
I want his resolution authorizing the adoption of the capital improvement program for five years from July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2023. Inclusive. Just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Go ahead. <coughs> yes. Council Member Mandel. Yes. Council Member Moore. Yes. Vice President Diamond. Uh, first of all, I want to just ask the commissioner, and as we figure out the project going forward, I'm just asking to continue to work with to the extent that it's possible with in house employees here in the city so that we can continue to do what we've done all the time and just continue to communicate with the CPA. And so, if I miss that, I go yes. Yes. And two is a resolution authorizing the adoption of the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. All great are set forth there in determining and fixing the real estate tax levy. Are there any motions on this item? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the errata sheet into the budget and to update the total tax levy, the tax levy and the homestead and the non homestead tax rates to reflect such changes. For a second. I second. I second. Okay, one motion. Councilor Mandela. Yes. Councilor Mandela. Yes. Councilor Moore. Yes. Vice President Diamond. Yes. President Aram. Yes. Okay. So we call item two. Resolution authorizing the adoption of budget for fiscal year commencing July first, two thousand eighteen, and ending June thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. Appropriate sum set forth therein and determining the fixing of the real estate tax law. We'll just move the adoption of this item as amended. I will. In a second? I will. Board of Council Member Dunbar. So, again, just a reminder for all those people that sent us email saying vote no, if we do that, you get the 12.4% tax increase. So, um, Council put in a lot of hours to get this number down, and uh, so we did it. It still may not be what you like, but it's what we need to do to move the city forward. So I vote yes. Councilman Bendo. I echo everything Councilman Bendo just said. We actually went line by line through the entire budget, finding any place that we could recast projections. Um, with that, I vote yes. Councilman Bendo. Okay. So in March 2017, according to university, conducted a statewide survey in collaboration with the New York State Conference of Mayors and the Association of Towns of the State of New York to evaluate causes and responses to fiscal stress. Uh, what are some of the drivers of fiscal stress? Well, 98% indicated aging infrastructure. 73% uh, indicated local governments like ours with limited ability to raise revenues. And 71% indicated state mandate procedures coupled with reduction of state aid. And that sounds similar to where we are as a city. So how did some of the other local municipalities respond? They increased grant funding pursuits. They explored shared services agreements. But they also sought, sought to develop a coalition, which included members of the local business community, the civics, the local <coughs> residents, to help with the response. And so I propose tonight that a coalition be developed uh, now to work together in anticipation of next year's budget. That being said, thank you. that being said, this is still a sad night in the city of Long Beach. This is my third budget, for the third time, the residents have bailed out our government with tax increases and fees. Balancing a budget should never be done by raising taxes as an easy fix on the backs of the taxpayers. Good government lessens deficits, reduces taxes, is transparent uh, with respect to sharing information regarding spending and sources of revenue. Uh, Ms. Hessian pointed out earlier that something should have been done earlier, but I can say that in 2016, uh, at least for those who were here in 2016, we did this. We spent hours again, uh, weekends, late nights, trying to create a budget that we were all proud of. We did it, but without the controls in place, all of our hard work has come to naught, and now we're here at the same place in 2018. In 2017, uh, during the budget process, I called for personnel evaluations to address some of the uncontrollable overtime allotments. Uh, once again, uh, on April 17th of this year, I called for budget reform. But tonight it's important for all of us as residents to know that the council met to address the budget, budget concerns on several dates. I can name many of them, but it's not important. What's important is we work together because we value the fact that this is a serious time in the life of our city. 
uh, regardless of the tax percentage that we're presenting tonight, the work has to begin tomorrow so that we can restore public trust and also the physical health of our city. Tonight's vote is a small drop in a historic bucket of fiscal mismanagement. And so tonight we speak to you as a council to say that we can no longer turn our heads because the city of Long Beach deserves better. I'm pleased with the conversations that I've held with my colleagues for the past two months. Several revenue options have been openly discussed and they are promising. I look forward to working with the community coalition uh, so that we can dig deep and find some other solutions. I also look forward to working with my colleagues on assessing current fiscal process as well as procedures and making the necessary changes, the checks and balances to our city charter. With that, I vote yes. Vice President Biden. So I echo all of the things that all of my colleagues have said. I don't think any of us here tonight want to vote for a budget that imposes a tax increase upon our residents. But as Councilman Bento said, a no vote on this budget only needs a 12% tax increase, while a yes vote on this budget <coughs> worked really hard to bring down this levy and to ensure that we're imposing as small an impact on our residents as we can. The budget is, as it stands, as amended, continues the standard of living that we have come to expect here in Long Beach, while at the same time protecting our workforce and the services that we have come to expect and enjoy. So while it's a difficult vote and nobody wants to do it with that, I commend my colleagues on a job well done. It's been a very long and difficult road, but I, I don't know. Um, so with, without having a permanent city manager, Control and has been a difficult process. And to speak to the gentleman that spoke about structural changes, um, I think it'll be required of the next city manager uh, to discuss the structure changes that we need. Um, and having a community forum, I think, is a great idea um, because when folks came up here, we were here what twice until eleven o'clock at night or so. No one actually asked to cut in services. That's not what, what folks asked for. Um, so this budget maintains our services and our standard of living um, without uh, drastic cuts. Um, so it's, it's unfortunate that it is as high as it is, but it's a balanced budget and it's something that I think we could be proud of that the city won't go into fiscal stress. So with that, I will yes. I agree the resolution authorizes the city manager to purchase recreation, youth and family services, and lifeguard t-shirts, sweatshirts, sweatpants, jackets, and hats on the most responsible basis. Motion to move adoption of the Second. Board of Council Member Bender. Yes. Council Member Bender. Yes. Council Member Bender. Yes. Vice President Biden. Yes. President Obama. Yes. And for the resolution rescheduling the publication of the hearing and rescheduling the public hearing regarding the ordinance and the code of ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding the Long Beach Rectors. Motion to move adoption of the Second. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.